Good afternoon, Stephen Elliott of Coherent Breathing with you again. It's uh, June 8th, 2025. And today uh, I'd like to spend a few minutes on uh, what I have numbered principle number three. Uh, when we discuss principle number one, we discussed that coherent breathing is breathing at the nominal rate of five breaths per minute um, with equal periods of inhalation and exhalation and being sure to uh, relax deeply during exhalation. The nervous system is already arranged to facilitate this for us. And if we allow that to occur naturally, it will. Um, moving on to principle three, uh, principle three introduces the, the notion of the bridges. Uh, these are anatomical zones that I ran across uh, while instrumented in my, my search for uh, the Awakened Mind EEG. And uh, first I learned of the diaphragm bridge, uh, the one that I was really working with very deliberately regarding uh, elicitation of uh, the Awakened Mind e EEG. Um, and I found uh, it very curious uh, that the diaphragm worked in this manner. That is, that we have uh, both uh, somatic control, that is, intentional willing control of the diaphragm, as we use when we blow up a balloon or when we hold our breath when we go underwater, and when we're not paying attention to the diaphragm, uh, the central nervous system takes care of moving it uh, at its own pace in order to keep us alive and well. And uh, I began to research, well, that's very, uh, very interesting that uh, we have a, a muscle group and or uh, organ function, the, this being the thoracic pump that works uh, under both uh, autonomic and somatic control. So I began to to research what the other would-be groups of the body are that offer the same degree of, of dual control, the eyes being uh, an excellent example. That is, uh, we're able to close the eyes when we wish. We're able to open them when we wish. When we're not paying attention to them at all, then the, the nervous system goes about uh, causing the eyes to blink uh, at its own pace. So uh, this is true of basically all of the openings of the body. Uh, they have the ability to open and close willingly or automatically. And uh, the hands and the feet. And uh, I offer that the reason that the uh, this dual control extends to the hands and the feet is because they are the means by which we interact with the external world. Um, and they do have an open and closed state. So uh, what we want to do with uh, these six bridges is, is cons conscript them in the practice of relaxation. Um, so if we inhale, and exhale, we deliberately relax these zones, the head and the face, the tongue and the throat, the diaphragm, hands, pelvic floor, and the feet. And we can do that top to bottom. Uh, gravity is always uh, pulling down on us uh, when we're vertical or otherwise. And it's easy to relax from the top down as though we're letting it all go. 
uh, letting gravity have access to these zones of the body as we scan downward <clears throat> during exhalation. And we'll find uh, that these are very, very potent and effective locations uh, of the body. They have a lot to do, I think, with uh, survival and, uh, and uh, fight or flight. So by learning to uh, moderate or modulate them with our mind, we're gaining conscious control over functions of the body that here, have heretofore been uh, unconscious or subconscious. And in doing so, we're able to realize a, a very deep state of relaxation, one that will often result in uh, a spontaneous kriya if we're in the shavasana uh, position on the floor, for example, and are able uh, to let it all go when we uh, during exhalation. So let's try that uh, again. We'll just employ the head and the face for right now. There are multiple bridges uh, on the head, the eyes being one, the mouth uh, being one under control of the jaw muscles, etc. cetera. Uh, both of these having the obvious uh, ability to open and close uh, at will. And if you just give it a moment's thought, you'll it'll make sense why this is true for uh, these specific parts of the head and face. So let's inhale. And as you exhale, allow the eyes to gently close. We're not closing them deliberately. We're allowing gravity to allow the eyelids to close. The same is true for the, for the jaw. We want to let the masseter muscle and the other muscles of the, of the jaw and head and face let go. They will automatically let go even without our conscious effort. But having learned that the body automatically relaxes during exhalation, we can now, again, conscript these muscle groups uh, into our conscious practice of relaxing deeply. And uh, I posit that what uh, a benefit we gain from this is that we're, what we're really doing is relaxing internally. Often when we think of relaxation, we think of what's going on externally with our body. But we want to gain access to what's going on internally, specifically quieting down the nervous system and with that quieting down um, all of the low threshold muscle motor units of the body, including those that make up the circulatory system, will automatically relax. Arterial walls will relax and open. More blood flows through the body. Um, we uh, can immediately feel a sense of relief and comfort just having maybe done that once or twice. I know I do right now. So I hope you do too. And I'm, I'm very sure that if you practice this, that in short order, you will begin to feel uh, a profound difference in your internal state as a consequence of, of addressing these specific locations on the body during exhalation. Now, I've been asked the question, shouldn't we also relax during inhalation? And my answer is yes, to the extent possible. But because the autonomic nervous system automatically swings toward sympathetic emphasis during inhalation, there is a bit of tension that builds up uh, about which we're not able to do anything. During exhalation, the, the autonomic nervous system swings back toward parasympathetic emphasis automatically. And we're wanting to ride that 
that wave just like we would ride a roller coaster going down the hill. Give that a try and uh, let me know if you have questions. Uh, comments will be turned on on my video and uh, I do respond. So thank you and see you next week.